All right, so today um, I'm going to be doing a bit of a teardown. So just a first word of warning, uh, if you're squeamish, I'm about to damage this little red dot because um, I want to see uh, what's inside, take a look at the circuitry, um, kind of see how they, they actually make these things work. And now optically, they're not that complicated. There's only uh, a few lens elements in here and they're not really adjustable. Um, but, you know, once you get into actual control circuitry, that's more what I'm interested in because, um, you know, these little red dots, depending on which version you get, some of the, the really, you know, high quality ones, the, the aim points and trigicons can be super duper expensive. Um, and this is a primary arms made in China um, red dot. This is an old one uh, I got from a guy on the Internet. It's broken. So, again, you know, I kind of made the joke earlier, but don't worry too much. I'm not really damaging anything. This thing doesn't work already. Um, but looking at the difference between this and one of the high-end ones would be kind of interesting to me. So I'm going to start off with this little uh, cheap broken red dot that functionally, you know, works on the same principles as the more expensive ones just to kind of see, um, you know, what's going on inside. Part of what I'm curious about is where does the money go? I mean, looking at this thing, it's an absolute brick. Um you know, the, the machined aluminum body, it does have a few different pieces. Um, this back kind of lens piece is separately machined. Uh, this side tube is, I believe, a separate piece, the caps and everything. There's a lot of parts. Um, and these things aren't crazy expensive. But again, uh, this is a primary arms version made in China. It's not that expensive. I think, you know, you can get red dots you know, Chinese made red dots for well under a hundred bucks. This one, you know, might have gone for a hundred or two hundred dollars. But then you get into the really nice ones, again, the aim points, the the trigicons of the world, and you're spending five to seven hundred dollars for one of these. And um, you know, it can't just be the housing. Now, some of them, you know, you're gonna have like forged housings and you know that can be more expensive. But I mean, man, just as far as the bulk cost of the materials. Uh, this thing is chunky. So, uh, so you know, as far as actual just material, this thing has to be, you know, just as much money. Especially when you get to looking at the little pistol red dots. They're really tiny and they don't use much in the way of uh, mechanics or anything. They're just little bitty housing, uh, the circuitry. So, you know, Trigicon little pistol red dot costs you $450. Why? Um, so part of me wants to look at how complicated this thing is on the inside to see what we can find out, um, you know, what kind of engineering goes into this. So I have looked this thing over and I'm not really sure that there's any way to get in here without just absolutely destroying this. And I mean, I may have to zip this whole thing open. Uh, I am prepared with a variety of tools, including uh, if you recognize this green plastic, that is a Proxon rotary tool. So if I got to zip this thing open with a cutting wheel, so be it. Um, so let's get started. Now, the uh, the principle of how a red dot works, and I'll try to show you, you can see right there in this corner, uh, there's this little bulge right there in the element. Um, that is the emitter, and what's going to happen is it shines, uh, again, the, the LED will shine a dot this way. Now, this front lens element, if I you know, have seen kind of what I believe the way these things are made. There's basically two lenses with like a reflective film or, you know, boundary in between that lets most of the light through, but it will reflect that red dot. So basically they just shine it and that red dot reflects back. And then you've got adjustments uh, so that you can center that thing uh, within this. Now the adjustment mechanism, looking at this, I'm guessing there's like some sort of inner tube that it's moving and maybe, you know, that's either moving the emitter and where it focuses on that front lens, I think is kind of what's going to happen. Uh, the way that thing's mounted, there's going to be like a gimbal or something in there that it, you know, pushes up and down side to side. All right. So I uh, got the metrics. Go three millimeter. There we go. There's the mount. Getting lots of parts with this thing. Little riser. So you got a riser, a little pick mount. Next up, let's just get all the knobs off. 
All right, so there's windage. Oh, nope. So there's uh, elevation, here's windage adjustments. Uh, this thing's AA battery. So there's cap, you got uh, three O-rings there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there's the um, positive terminal. And uh, looks like that just made contact through the body. Um, that's spring loaded, keep tension on the battery. And this is where we're getting some issues. You can see those little dots. This would take a uh, special tool to actually pull that out to you because there's like a captured spring in there and I don't have special tools. And so that's why this is going to be a destructive teardown. Uh, nothing really in there, just the uh, negative terminal. All right, now this is the intensity adjustment and that sucker, it's got a little ceiling O-ring. Let's see if that helps. I've been looking at this thing and I don't know if there's a good way to get this thing off of there. Yeah, I don't know. This thing is captured, um, so I, I don't know if there's a really good way to get this knob out of there. Um, hmm. So let me look at this, see what I can do. I'd rather not break it right yet, but um, might have to start destroying things right out of the gate. Well, after a bit of looking, I don't know. I don't think uh, I can figure out how to get this thing off without destroying it. So uh, time to just introduce the solver of problems, uh, which is going to be a cutoff wheel. So here we go. All right, so let's see if we can crack this thing. There we go. So in here, it looks like brightness adjustment. All right, so there's the uh, the brightness adjustment knob, and it looks like we've got a bunch of resistors there. Um, and as you turn that knob, it's going to be making contact. Yeah, so as you rotate the knob, it's just got increasing resistance. So basically, um, you know, this is connected in with the circuit that feeds the LED, and this is probably... I'm, guessing, you know, without looking through it, probably the drop resistors or maybe something like that for the LED. Um, and as you increase the resistance, the LED brightness drops because um, it, it doesn't allow uh, as much current. It's like one of them's missing. I don't know if that's related to the function or why this thing stopped working. I don't see it. And these are just little surface mount resistors. So who the hell knows? They're tiny. Um, but that is what the knob and you know, it does look like, looking at the interior, this thing, yeah, is threaded and then glued onto this. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, just thinking through, again, the way this thing works, you turn it on um, with, you know, this knob. It would turn it on because there's one setting there that doesn't connect, right? So as you turn this thing, um, it connects through a resistor of increasing size or decreasing size, depending on which way you turn it. And that just regulates the brightness. Now, um, the interesting thing to me will be, is there any other circuitry in here um, to handle like, I, I don't know if this thing had shake awake or auto power off or any of that, right? Um, but literally, I mean, it could be as simple as a resistor network and the LED. And that could literally be it. Um, so that's the next step. I, I'm going to try to work on this, and I'm not sure how to get this off still without continuing uh, to cut through this thing. So, again, I hate to destroy it this much, but, you know, it's got to come off. All right, so I got this thing split. All right, so here we go. Yep, yep, yep. So, yep, you've got essentially, here you go, um, center contact, edge contact. And again, uh, it's just feeding the circuit through these resistors as you turn that dial. Oh, no, yeah. So, so here's uh, so here's why I can get this knob off. Um, you can see this setup. There's a, a retention 
uh, kind of clip here, but it's held in with screws. So those screws are put in um, after basically the outside ring of this knob goes on. Uh, so this is actually like this. All right, so that fits under that clip there. Um, then the clip is installed, it's screwed in, then the PCB is dropped in. Then uh, you see this thing has an inner ring. That inner ring is screwed in and glued. And then the outer part of the knob is also then screwed over that and glued. So I was not wrong to cut this thing off. There was no way to get this thing off without maybe, uh, I don't know, heating this thing really, really hot. I, I, I don't think there's any way to get this thing off without destroying it. So I feel better now about doing that. But um, there's your two contacts. You can see uh, right there in the middle and right there. And again, it's just a wiper, right? As you rotate that knob, the center, uh, it, well, so as you rotate that knob, these two things stay where they are, and you're rotating this PCB and just basically running the circuit through uh, a series of little resistors. Um, now, uh, this, uh, these resistors cost a fraction of a penny. So again, all the resistors on this thing might be a penny in quantity. I mean, they're, they're, you can get this made very, very cheap. So uh, very small PCB, very simple resistor network um, going into here. So there's going to be some maybe, if there's more control circuitry, maybe it's behind this. So that's the next step to get this thing off. So I'm going to start unscrewing this. So this is where I get to uh, break out my high standards of special tool set. All right, so uh, there is, yeah, there's some stuff in there. Very hard to see when we can get the uh, flashlight on it. Oh, there we go. See if you can see it. Yep, there's PCB down in there. Okay, so next step, got to get this plug out, um, which I am sure is glued in. <laughs> Okay, so we got the power leads coming out to a little bit of contact PCB there. Um, okay, so I think my strategy first is going to be put the screws in most of the way and then see if I can get on with a pair of pliers and turn this thing. I, you know, that's glued, so probably screwed um, on that. But going to give it a shot, see what happens. All right, so here we go. See what we tear up with this. We've got our made in USA little pliers here. So we're going to get on these two screws. Let's see, can we turn this thing or is that just going to snap? Snap. Well, crap. All right, with that frustration, um, here's the thing. Uh, you could heat this, but there's a problem. This whole thing's aluminum, and that basically makes the whole damn thing a big heat sink. And heating that, it's gonna just be a pain, and I'm more scared of damaging anything inside with heat. So I am going to hacksaw uh, right down through here, and right down through here. And I should be able to get the blade in there, split this thing in half, and just crack her open. So I'm gonna go do that off camera. I'll be back. All right, listen, every day it's important. Wake up and choose violence. All right, well, uh, one end of the uh, battery housing. Uh, again, these things are just screwed in and glued. Come out. All right, so there's that. All right, do I have this thing cut enough? Get in there. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Back to the saw. All right, let's give her another shot. Oh, ho, ho. jackpot. Okay, there's your inside of that tube. Yeah, just milled. All right, so there's the goods. Got into it just a touch on the edge. All right, so a little bit of confirmation here uh, of what I kind of figured. 
We just got two wires going in here, uh, which makes me suspect that this is just to the diode, which means what's coming out of here, uh, going through those resistors is literally, the brightness is just uh, a resistor control network. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, here is the control circuitry. We've got um, diode, capacitor, resistor. I mean, there are one, two, three, four, five components. LED, then the resistor network. That's what we're looking at. So let me uh, let me get this thing. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull this out um, so that I can look at it closer and figure out what the circuit on this thing is. All right, so uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I've got this circuit sorted out and pretty uh, pretty standard what's going on. So uh, battery terminals on the back and then the uh, the other terminal goes through the body. Um, connects to this, which is uh, basically a, a voltage regulator, but it's a it's a boost uh, circuit. So um, there was a big inductor here, which you can see the symbol for that I've, I've taken off just so I could look through the circuit. Uh, but it's it's just pure standard. Uh, this is a little boost regulator. Uh, it has uh, two capacitors. It's got an inductor and a shot key diode, and so that basically takes you know your one and a half volts or whatever from the battery, kicks it up to three volts, and then that comes into these terminals, which contact the switch. Um, the other wire goes off to the diode, um, and then uh, so the terminals connect through. Uh, all these resistors, so whenever you rotate your dial, you're getting different resistance. Um, it goes from off to zero resistor. Um, and then as you go up this way, you get really, really high resistors on this end, uh, which, uh, you know, I'll put up the schematic for this uh, on the screen, you know, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then that runs off uh, to the other side of the LED. And so as you're selecting different resistors, it's... Uh, dimming or brightening your LED. Uh, so that's the circuit. Again, I, I, just nothing to it. The uh, The whole voltage system here is five components. So um, most expensive one, maybe 10 to 15 cents for, for that chip, you know, and all this stuff, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I actually found, uh, I couldn't find the exact uh, little boost regulator they're using, but I found several that seem to have the exact same reference uh, set up. So uh, this looks just right off of a data sheet for one of these little regulators. Okay, so uh, next up, we need to get into uh, the main housing. So first thing, I'm going to take out the erectors here. Um, there's, by the way, where the diode is. So I'm going to try to get in there eventually. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna take those off and then, uh, looking at this thing, I may try to cut through the body because, again, I'm, I can't really unscrew this. I guess at this point I could try to heat it up, but, eh, let's just cut her open. So, I'm gonna try to go in and maybe cut through halfway and then we can look at the erectors and everything. Um, so, back off to the saw, um, you know, sorry, but that's what's about to happen. Okay, I think we're in. Yeah, got a little screwdriver wedged and she came on open. All right, so I mentioned uh, early on that there was an internal tube uh, that gets adjusted. So there are your adjustments. All right, so your elevation and windage, you know, whenever you're rotating these, you are uh, just shoving this thing around in there, and that's uh, what's what's going on. Now, the other thing, so as you can see on the front uh, end here, this element does have a bit of an angle on it, um, and that is uh, to help with the uh, the reflection of that dot back in your eye, making sure that it, it comes back uh, through the center of the lens. Um, so there's the front element. So here's where our LED comes in. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that we can get a better look. All right. So uh, there was just grease all over the inside of this thing. And then it had that uh, aluminum shavings all over it. So uh, by the way, uh, inside there's the, uh, whenever we were looking at it earlier, you can see that's the emitter coming out. Um, got regular electric tape and then they put on some liquid 
uh, vinyl tape too. Yeah, let's take care of that. And here we go. So uh, once again, the uh, the glue fairy has been in here. Um, I thought, you know, probably probably a little too easy just to pull this thing out, but I glued it right in there. By the way, uh, this, yeah, all right, tube's aluminum, but then it's got plastic inserts and rings. So uh, aluminum tube, and then like I said, this thing's glued in there pretty darn good. Now looking at it, that just looks like a LED. Nothing special. It doesn't look fancy. It doesn't look like some custom thing. But now, you know, who knows? Maybe it's got some special specs. Um, I can get it out. Take a look at it. And voila! There it is. That's it. That just looks like a regular old 3 millimeter LED to me. But now, you know, again, I haven't really... I don't have the, the part number or anything. Who knows? But yeah, that just looks like a regular old LED. Like I said, maybe a 3 millimeter. Um, well, not much to it. Um, pretty much, you know, kind of what I thought inside as far as once I saw those electronics and nothing going on, those two wires just had to be for that. Um, so there is, again, that inner tube set up with its uh, angled front lens. Let me see. Now look, all this stuff's glued in there. And, you know, I watched a, a video on Aimpoint's factory and on their element, um, and it's kind of hard, maybe you can tell in the video, um, that red reflection is under this front lens element. And I think what they do is that is like a sandwich layer in between two lenses. So um, looking through the back, you know, you can't see it all the time, but that's like the reflective layers in between, glued in between two other lenses. So then we've got... Uh, here in the front, this has a lens, but I believe that's probably just something, just protection to keep something from getting in here and scratching the, the you know, reflective lens. Then the rear is the same thing, just another little protective lens. And that's, that's what there is to it. Now, I mean, the mechanics of this thing, it is uh, beefy. So I, I think earlier, you know, I mentioned how sturdy this thing was built. These uh, housings, these dual tubes, I believe this is all one piece. Um, so that main body, I believe all that was milled out of one big block. Because um, looking at this, I, I don't see any seams in that. It looks like that is... Uh, Originally, I thought maybe it, it had been like welded or something or uh, glued or some, you know, maybe a mechanical attachment. But yeah, looking at it now, uh, you know, so that's a pretty complicated uh, big part. You know, a couple of bores, a bunch of threads, um, flats and all kinds of stuff on it. Um, it does have, you know, the inner structures of this thing are all threaded and glued and everything else. But. You know, there's quite a bit going on here. And again, they don't sell these things for, for too much money. I think a uh, newer version of this may cost just a couple hundred bucks. Now, I also think the newer ones have more advanced like circuitry in them and stuff. But, um, you know, it's kind of, there's two different ways to look at this. Whenever I look at this uh, primary arms version, it, it is kind of surprising that they sell these as cheap as they do. Um, that's what manufacturing in China can get you. Um, you make a bunch of these things and, you know, I, I think there's a bunch of very, very similar designs. The, the R&D element's pretty low. Um, and so, you know, it's basically the parts and everything. And there are, it's a pretty big bill of materials, a um, bunch of parts to keep track of. But the circuitry was, again, you know, a little power regulation circuit that's right off of a data sheet. Looks like a basic three millimeter LED. And, you know, the, the brightness was just a resistance network of uh, LED pull-down resistors. So it uh, changed the amount of current that flows through this thing and changes the brightness. Um, so that's all very, very simple. I would love to take a look at a higher-end uh, optoelectronics. I'd love to look at something with, um, you know, multiple reticles or something with ShakeAwake or auto features or, you know, some of the hollow sun that's got... Um, you know, solar 
because you know you got to have charging and all kinds of stuff built on those circuits. They got to be more complicated. Um, if anybody has you know an old version, um, some broken something, you know, I, it's going to be hard probably to get a hold of a, a broken Aimpoint or a broken Trigicon or broken EOTech simply because the warranty service that they provide is so good that you know nobody throws away. They return them. They they fix them. Um, so, but, you know, if anybody's got a broken hollow sun or a fancier um, version of the primary arms you'd like me to take a look at and send it to me, just let me know. Leave a comment down below. But um, that's going to that's gonna do it uh, for this teardown and, and this overview of how this thing works, right? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, I got in here and made a mess, but uh, learned some interesting stuff. It's, uh, it's both you know, a lot more money involved in the mechanics than, than I think maybe people give it credit for and a lot less in the electronics maybe than people give it credit for. Anyway, uh, as always, if you got any feedback or comments or uh, anything else, just feel free to leave a comment. Thanks.